I heard a lot of little sighs and comments going on in the audience during the movie from all of you, so I know you all have, have things that you want to share. Um, first of all, I do want to welcome um, the county's Health Department's Director of Health Planning and Evaluation, Peter Rumble. Thank you for sneaking in during the film, and we really appreciate your time uh, to share with us today. Um, one of the things I do want to mention is we do have community media here with us today to um, make this available online for anybody who wasn't able to attend today. So at this time, we want to go ahead and open it up to comments, questions, and answers, but I do want to ask you to speak into the microphone so that it is picked up on the video. So. Uh, do you have any opening comments you want to make, or should we just jump right into question and answers? Let's just let's just jump right in. Okay, thoughts, things you want to share, reactions to the film, questions um, about what's going on in our own community. When they were um, talking about the school lunches, I found it pretty remarkable that they didn't even mention the Jamie Oliver food revolution. And I don't know if any of you have seen that, but that show. Um, the chef comes in and he's trying to make school lunches healthier with fresh food, fresh vegetables. And he had so much resistance. And the program actually failed because of how much resistance. So it's not just that we have this advertising. Um, we just have this entrenched thing in the schools and in our families where kids are just given bad stuff because it's easier. Yeah, good comments. Um, I did have a question about, they were talking about state and local laws um, related to physical education and lunches. And do you have uh, uh, information about what we're doing here in Sonoma County in terms of well, healthier Cal school lunches and P PE? So California is one of the states that requires uh, physical education in schools. Uh, unfortunately, that's one of those um, laws that aren't uniformly, uh, that isn't uniformly applied. So many, many schools, including many, many schools in Sonoma County, uh, don't live up to that uh, legal standard, that state legal standard. Um, what so with that said, what can we do about it? I think that's one of the things that we always need to focus on is, um, you know, we're not going to solve the national obesity epidemic uh, in Sonoma County, but we can certainly address what's going on in Sonoma County in Sonoma County. So to the point about, um, Angela, that you made about um, how Food Revolution, how that show uh, uh, kind of met its demise, I think that we are battling not only um, Know, growing norms and advertising and, and all of those things that um, that the show highlights. But we're, I think we're battling um, uh, really entrenched, I think you're right on, really entrenched systems of the way that we've always done things. And so it's very difficult to start to address those. It's even more difficult when there's not a lot of financial resource available to, uh, to schools and to education. Education in general, not just uh, PE, which has, or physical ed, which has even uh, more limited uh, resources. So some of the things that we're doing and trying to emphasize in Sonoma County, we're, we are trying to uh, emphasize um, getting better, better food into our schools uh, through investments in our food system, through um, uh, trying to uh, develop um, or overcome regulations that prevent that from happening now. Uh, uh, again, related to our, our local food system and distribution of, of healthy food. Um, we have programs uh, funded by Kaiser, uh, Healthy Eating, Eating Active Living um, programs uh, that the uh, department and, and uh, county help implement in addition, uh, again, with support from Kaiser. Safe Routes to School, and there are other programs that are, are really trying to influence the environment that, that impacts those systems. It's not to say we can't do more and we need to do more, um, but uh, I, think, uh, I think we're moving in that direction. I think one of the fundamental things we might be able to do is start changing that culture a little bit through conversations. Um, you know, what the normal is in terms of what we eat or what we look like uh, has skewed people's perception to the point where um, what we see as healthy is, 
it's not all, it's not all the same. It's um, and I think that's some of what's keeping people from, you know, accepting and implementing programs like the one that a Angela talked about. So I think getting people's minds to move in a more healthy direction and what what that looks like, uh, you know, is is something we as individuals can do on a small scale basis. Uh, other ideas, reactions, comments, questions. Mine start out with comments, and then uh, I guess maybe they're all comments. But that movie, Forks Over Knives, I think you can have neighborhood parties or family parties and show that film. And I know people who have changed their lifestyle and their weight and their cholesterol and all that just by watching that and implementing the very simple things that they need to do. The other thing is that the airwaves are owned by the people by congr congressional uh, law, by judicial law, and by administrative law. And so at some level, you know, it's a combination of corporations and everything who work to market juices and all these things. It's true that the Coke and Pepsi industry were fighting each other, and then when they saw the trend for healthier, They've all gone into waters that are flavored and juices and everything, so they're still marketing as much sugar as they did before. And I think that um, the deception is perversive. And also, as they were saying with the corn, you know, the, the corn crop is insured, but not all crops are insured. And we do that because it's a grain and it's fatty. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about the article that was in the newspaper the other day about the low-fat diet versus the, um, the uh, Mediterranean diet mm. and how the Mediterranean diet came out ahead, which tends to be a higher-fat food. What's really bothered me is when I was a kid, we always drank whole milk. I don't remember anybody being fat in school, and we always had whole milk. Now children have a, a selection and they've replaced the fat in milk with sugar. And that is a bad thing, because I think we were meant to eat fat as human beings within limits. And when we were hunters and gatherers, most of the fat that we had was not saturated. It was good fats, like nuts and seeds and you know whatever we could, avocados, for instance. And um, even in wild game, the animals have a higher um, omega-3 contact than they do when we eat corn bed, beef and chickens and things. So um, I think having fat in our diet is a positive and it's satiating. You know, it stops you from eating too many calories. Sugar doesn't, sugar turns on your appetite. Fat turns it off if you don't eat the sugar with it anyway. <laughs> Um, I have a comment, and then I have a question. Um, I have two small kids in elementary school, and um, of course they like to eat all the sugary things, but I just I just personally make a conscious decision when I'm buying the food that comes into our house. Um, I don't buy the sugary food. I mean, within reason. And when we do have it, it's a special occasion. So um, I think parents just really need to be you know, very conscientious, you know, my kids get a lunch packed every day, they don't do the hot lunch at school, um, although I've gone to school and I see that they are rushed through lunch, um, which I don't agree with, which I plan to address with my school. Um, so that's just my comment. And then the question I have is, with the county's goal of the 2020 being the healthiest county by 2020, what are the metrics that we are basing that on? What, when do we know we have achieved that goal? So um, two points. One, um, good job <laughs> for the for what you're doing at home. I think you know that's where it starts, right? Is um, kind of taking that personal responsibility and making choices about the food we eat, including you know fats, as long as um, you know as long as everything is in proportion and in reason. And that's there's no you know magic science behind diet, and uh, it's pretty common sense actually. Um, on the healthiest county question, it's a very it's a very good question. Um, Health Action, which is a, a broad-based community council that the Department of Health Services convenes and um, supports, has developed um, ten goals, and within those ten goals, there are twenty-two indicators. 
Uh, and those are the metrics that we intend to use to identify whether or not we've, we've achieved that vision of being the healthiest county in, in California by 2020. Now, I'll say that those are the goals and, and measures that our county has prioritized and has uh, identified as being important. And they are very apropos of the, of the video, things like graduation from school on time, of, uh, uh, of high school on time, physical activity in schools, uh, good mental health. Uh, having um, economic resources to provide for your family and so on. So a very, um, I think, holistic view of health. Um, I make that point to highlight the fact that we'll have to do some analysis on our own uh, of where we are in the county based on those goals because other, other counties um, uh, are certainly um, further behind us in some regard of, of highlighting those areas of community health, things like education as being a health issue, for example. Um, and, and others are ahead of us uh, in, in other areas. But those are, again, the, the areas that we've prioritized for ourselves, right? And so there's not one common um, ranking, I should say, across the state or even across the country that's really useful. Thank you. I think that was really helpful. Did, did anybody have any other questions or comments? Oh, let's go to Felicia from Kaiser first. <laughs> she, wants to, she wants to close. And this was off of Katie's comment about um, not buying sugary cereals. The other day, I had decided I was going to start cutting sugar out. And I being frugal, decided I, I still had to eat the cereals that were in my cabinet. So I went through the boxes and looked at the sugar content. I had grabbed the um, Raisin Bran thinking, okay, it's got sugar, I know, but it's not gonna be the worst of them. And it was, it had 18 grams of sugar in a bowl of Raisin Bran. So the point is, when you go shopping, you really need to pay attention to what the added sugar in the products are. Good point. What educated uh, yeah. consumers. So I want to have uh, let Felicia make a comment, and then we'll turn it back over to Peter for any last-minute wrap-up um, about health action or today's uh, film. First, I want to thank you for putting this on. I know a tremendous amount of effort went into it and resources especially all of you who've come and, and dedicated your time to this. I just had a couple of questions, and forgive me for doing this, Jill, but how many people in this room have found this to be beneficial? How many people can think of one or two other people that you wish were sitting right next to you? <laughs> so this is the third out of four, right? And so the next one is scheduled for the 27th. How many people can make a... Can, can sort of make a commitment. You don't, you know, give it your good all to bring one or two other people with you and get this room filled. Because I've seen the last four, and the last four is really inclusive of bringing all of the messages together. So those persons who may not have been here to see one or three can still get the benefit of it. I sit here and I think about my girlfriend's daughter who's 11. And I'm trying to think of how do I gently tell her get it together for the sake of your daughter without hurting her feelings? And should I even care about hurting her feelings? And so, you know, we're in a crisis. Um, we have to rely on that next generation to care for many of us. And if they can't get out of a chair, you're gonna be left caring for them. So I challenge you to bring one, two, three people, let them know what this has meant to you. Um, and, you know, take this and move it forward. Um, the government can't do it for us, our employer can't do it for us, but you can collectively work to carry this message together to create programs that um, work in your lives and a, in your eight hour day with the county. And Kaiser will continue to make the commitment to work with Jill and her counterparts to help bring wellness and information to you. Peter? Amen. <laughs> I mean, really, amen. 70% of our kids don't pass their physical fitness test in school. You know people who uh, need to be here. And the fourth video is 
the one that ties it together. So. so Right, right. So you all have you all have more power than you probably realize. That you have the power of persuasion. Um, you have information that other people don't have, and it all starts with individuals. There's nothing more powerful than what individuals can do collectively you know, by gathering friends, etc. So with that, thank you for your time. I would encourage you to uh, fill out an evaluation form. Your feedback is helpful. Also, the Healthy Habits website, I know you can find Health Action on the Health Services website, but the Healthy Habits Wellness website is right there. There's a link to it on the intranet homepage where you can find links to Health Action and all those 10 goals, in addition to lots of other information to help you and your family make, um, make change, help change culture, healthier culture. The film is also on the Healthy Habits website. Um, HBO has a, a website as well, but each of the films with the introduction and the Q&A session is available on the Healthy Habits website.